Hey, greetings YouTube. Performance reviews where I give you the review from the technician's point of view. And today we're going to do a retrospective review on the Eureka Whirlwind. Now this vacuum and I have a long history. Well, not this particular one, but this is something that was really common when I first got into turning wrenches on vacuum cleaners. And this is one of the early bagless designs. Now bagless vacuums have gotten better since this was made but they still are a pretty bad idea compared to a bagged vacuum. So I'm gonna just show off kinda how things were now 20 years ago, and we're gonna go from there. Now there were a lot of variants of the Whirlwind and the Victory series of vacuum cleaners. I arguably will say that they're all horrible. The bagged version wasn't really any better, it was pretty bad. And These were considered like a Hoover Tempo back in the day. Now these machines commonly sold for anywhere from about $130 all the way up to about $200 and some change if it was a self-propelled model back in the day. And I'm going to put that into an inflation calculator and adjust that for inflation because I think you'll find it interesting that that is the disposable vacuum price of today. This is in that same price range. And I think a lot of people, there's this fallacy of the $100 vacuum and that it just hasn't been true for 30 years and I don't think it's... A true fallacy but th this definitely was one of those hundred and some change vacuums that was just not good. So first thing you'll notice is there are no quick release cord hooks. That is optional. That means you have to unwind it. And this like so many other budget machines has a cord clip up top and that cord clip is not so much for convenient but it's because if we take a look at the cord See the cord is routed down there. You can also see there's a power switch on the side and then your foot pedal release. And the reason the power switch is on the side, not at your fingertips, is there's less internal wiring to do with the machine. And this is really when machines started to become multi-piece when they were shipped and then put together with just one screw or two screws. And that kind of became the normal for vacuum cleaners. Now, this is something that would change over time. You notice there's a height adjustment here, which is good stuff, but this one is marked high and low carpet. The later models would be marked high and hard floor, not stopping the brush roller. You also see that they mention it's bagless. They mention it has a large cleaning path. You have the Eureka True HEPA. We'll talk more about that in a second. And you see there are just these fake holes for no reasons. Of course, it's late 90s early 2000s design. You can also see that the suction is off to the side. And what that means is that the suction is off center. It's not super off center, but it's off center enough in the way that the belt rides in there that this has an uneven cleaning path. The other thing that would vary is the hoses. Some of these would have stretch hoses. Some of these would have like those cheap crush proof hoses. Now, the genuine true HEPA filter. This is interesting. When you go inside, you notice that the HEPA filter element is replaceable. And some of these would have the replaceable element, some of these would have a whole cartridge, whole cartridge filter, and then you can see the motor. It is actually sealed, but you notice there's a lot of dust in here. Well, we'll, we'll roll in some footage here, but I went through and completely washed this machine. This machine has been completely gone through. That's how inefficient the one cyclone is on the unit. So now I think it's time to talk about early bagless technology. Because it was horrible. You know, when Dyson came out, he acted like he had reinvented the wheel. And the machines like this are kind of why he, he, he was so pretentious. So first off, the dust cup. Oh, man, this... There we go. The dust cup comes off like so. And we can see the dust cup is in odd shape. The bottom of the cyclone right there, we can see a grill, and we can see the top of the cyclone, an entry point here. So, <laughs> um, what's supposed to happen is the dirt comes in, swirls around the cyclone, and then gets sucked up you know, through here and separates with this. And this is supposed to open up and then to empty this side of the chamber, you were supposed to just kind of dump it out on the side there and that, that was always a problem. Uh, 
and then there's a big gasket here. You can, you can see where this would be problematic. Now, this is my favorite part of this machine, is Eureka was ahead of their time. Just like we saw Mila do with the CX-1 bagless, Eureka purposely made the bagless vacuum more profitable. And what do I mean by that? Well, you have to change the filter, they would sit every three months. Really, these weren't good past a few house cleanings. So these were sold in four packs. Now I've got some late model vintage filter packages here where they would come. You get four packages. You can see the change every three months there. Um, this one was $12.99 for four filters. This was a value pack they came out later. These were originally like 14 bucks for just the two. And again, later they would come out with this value pack. Now things get a little interesting. I have a true HEPA cartridge. You notice it's empty. Usually the HF9, uh, I believe that's the number on this. Uh, I might be wrong. It says change every six months. It'd be one cartridge. Or what was done in the day a lot, and I found these at our local vacuum store, and these have been discounted half price. There's two filters in here. And what you would do is you actually bojack one of those into the cartridge, and that's relatively high filtration. The, the pads are incredibly thick, if you look at that, but nothing, nothing compared to a HEPA filter. Uh, and this was, this was a common solution back in the day. So just thought I'd show you that since it's, it's kind of a rare thing to see. All right, we've gone through the first part of the bin assembly. There's also a cyclone, just like a Dyson would have, just one, just one, up here. And basically this stuff would get stuck up here between this hose. Later, this hose would become a quick release hose, which was a good thing. Then this is my favorite part. We have another one of those change every three months. And you can see how coarse and porous this is. This is not a fine filter at all, but this needed to be changed uh, on the regular basis along with the cup filter. So what we have here are three filters that need to be changed on a regular basis. So when this was new, the customers were spending every couple of months like $40, $50 on filters, which was great. Now we thought it was absurd at the vacuum shop at the time, but that's really what they needed. That was the cost of the expendables. So the idea that a bagless vacuum was gonna save your money was kind of flawed to begin with, even though this isn't the first bagless, this is one of the first commercially available ones. Now, later they would ditch the system and go to what was called a big cup, where they would put just a ple big pleated filter, and you'd see Dirt Devil do the same thing. That was more common. Uh, for the first bagless systems, just to have a, a big cartridge filter. And then the one I really remember really changing, it was Bissell, of all people, having a set of washable pre-motor filters. And they would degrade so fast after you washed them. But that was, that was kind of who started the washable pre-motor filter, like widespread adoption besides Dyson. Now, I know it was like Dyson's idea for that washable filter, but... Really, it was Bissell who put that into effect and made it more of an industry normal thing. And now every bagless vacuum has a washable filter and a replaceable filter. Or a washable filter that you need to replace every so often. So, kind of going to the history of the lineage of the bagless vacuum. Now, this guy just kind of clicks on like that. As you can see, this is just not a convenient system. Nothing about this was convenient. And this loses its efficiency very fast. In fact, why don't I show you a clip of me running the machine right after we cleaned it, which, j just for your information, there's that clip of me running the machine. We ran it maybe another two minutes off camera, and this is the result. You are seeing the result. It has not been used since then. That's how bad the system is. I want to demonstrate how small the cyclone is. I've got some shredded paper here. Let's see how long it takes. So about two thirds of this pot full of shredded paper. 
want to show you what has happened now because that's well, that's the interesting part. So you notice all the paper stuck to the top of this this grill here and it, it, it cut the suction off. Well that same thing would happen with pet hair and all sorts of debris. This would get so full of stuff after a room or two that you need to stop and clean it. And you can see with the Bacor stuff Cyclone seemed to be effective. But if we do the same thing with like pet hair or really anything smaller, stuff will start to build up on both sides, which is uh, not too good. So it really would have been nice if they had designed this a little bit differently. And again, they, they, they got rid of this design. Well, they sold a couple million of them and then they got rid of the design just a few years later. So this is the Eureka Victory motor. And they've used this motor in more vacuums than we can really count. You, you can see the shaft on here sticking out. And this was later found in the Eureka Mighty Mites and various other machines. And the idea of this clear housing, you can see there's gaskets there, is to make a sealed system. This is one of the first mass marketed sealed systems out there, would be the Cyclone assembly. The Cyclone is actually very primitive and was later replaced. As you can see, the Cyclone's dual chamber, similar to a Hoover, but instead of using just a screen, you can see there's a Cyclone here, and then the other top part of that Cyclone is right there, in there. This did not work very well. This whole thing would get very dirty. Then on the back, you have a space for a filter here. And this filter would get almost instantly dirty. They would tell people to change this filter every three months, which was very optimistic. It was like every three uses, three months, three minutes. Um, in terms of that. Also, before the motor, there would be yet another filter. The brush roller of the unit it's pretty standard, no frills, and actually one of the better brushes at the time in terms of durability in cheap vacuums. And then to top everything off, take a look at the housing. There is a HEPA cartridge that goes in here and would be sealed, is the idea. Let's see how much working vacuum this has just after a few uses. Headphone warning. So, as you see there, we got 50 sealed, 20 inches of working vacuum. And 20 inches of working vacuum, <laughs> it's about what a cordless vacuum gets today. Now the agitation of this is much better than any cordless vacuum, so it did, it did clean better than most cordless machines do today, but it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of questionable. Let me just bend over to grab the hose. I think it's time to talk about the tools. They weren't the worst tools. You had a wand, which you would build out. You had just a standard Eureka crevice tool. is the same crevice tool they used on everything till Eureka got sold. And then you also had this tool. They, again, they would put this on all sorts of vacuums. This was the worst dusting brush and the worst upholstery tool all in one. This, uh, I mean, you can see it's small. It concentrates the suction, but there's no relief cuts anywhere, so... That's not great. And then the dusting brush, again, you go to dust and then you scratch whatever you're dusting or hit on here. You can see where that, that is just a bad idea. It was a good idea and a bad idea, uh, this combo tool. Now, Eureka was one of the companies who really pushed the inch and a quarter fitting, which is really our standard vacuum fitting. That and like I'd say 34 millimeters are like the two most used ones today. So this, it's kind of nice, it's got a standard fitting. So yeah, you could adapt other things. And often I would sell customers other accessories. Now this, this has always been a problem with customers. It's not unique to this Eureka, but it's exaggerated on this Eureka, which is putting the hose back for customers. The act of simply doing that is really, really hard. And a lot of customers would do all sorts of things when they put this hose back and we'd see these come in every which way. Now, the other thing that's missing from here, cause this doesn't have 
the stretch hose, but if it had the stretch hose, it actually had like a little anchor down there for the stretch hose. There is a convenient carrying handle there. One other thing Eureka was doing was they were doing like these back saver handles and they would do this on canisters and uprights where you'd get this weird shaped handle. And what it did was it put the center of gravity in a better place on the machine. So even though it looks real funny, this actually feels really light in the hand even though this is not a lightweight machine because it's put all the weight in a much lower point on the machine, lowering the center of gravity. Now there is a pedal release here, which you press once. Hear that creaking. And then it would lift up to put onto an area rug. And in theory, you could, whoopsies. In theory, you could drop this down and lay it kind of flush, but not really, like, like most bagless vacuums. The wheels were also interesting why they were ball shaped. I don't know. This is well before the DC-15 came out. Hey folks, thanks for watching. Really appreciate you sticking to the end and checking out this retrospective review on the Eureka Whirlwind. If you had one, I'd love to hear from you. If you want to talk vacuum cleaners, go check out our Discord servers where we talk vacuum cleaners all day long. Also, I want to give a special thank you to our Aunt Sylvia for providing this example for us to take a look at. As this is not my machine, it is on loan from Aunt Sylvia. So big thank you to Aunt Sylvia for that. Have yourself a wonderful day.